Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Quisiera agradecerles por la invitación a esta conferencia y también a la Asociación Mexicana de Hepatología en México por la invitación. Es una gran conferencia. Es la primera vez en México y disfruto mucho que haya país a pesar del clima. Ha sido genial. Gracias. Entonces, lo que me gustaría hacer es hablar de gays y varices ecópticas. ¿Cómo se diagnostica? y tratan. Creo que todos sabemos que es es extasia vascular gástrica antral conocida como gay es una condición idiopática asociada también con cirrosis y esclerosis sistémica la se presenta más en mujeres sobre todo mayores de 70 años normalmente se presenta con sangrado gastro Intestinal con anemia por deficiencia de hierro y puede dar sangrado agudo si se anticoagula. ¿Qué hay del diagnóstico? Bueno, es fácil de diagnosticar cuando hay el estómago inflamado. Conocemos el, la apariencia clásica con rayas rojas que radian del túnero hacia el antro, que se llama estómago de, mel, de sandía. Lo que es no común, es más común en pacientes con cirosis y en vez de las rayas rojas se ven múltiples puntos rojos pun, eh, puntiagudos en el antro que es más común en cirrosis además hay que diferenciar el grave de la gastropatía el caif es más común en la zona prepilórica y en el antro mientras que la pH es más común en el fondo y en el cuerpo estas son dos imágenes que se reconocen claramente en el lado izquierdo del estómago de tipo sandía se reconoce de a 20 pies pero la presentación menos común es la de la derecha que son puntos rojos más común en pacientes con hipertensión portal y cirrosis muchas veces se confunden con gastritis y también con gastropatía hipertensa portal. Pueden ver estos puntos rojos distribuidos sobre todo en el antro y área prepilórico. Una cosa que me gusta mencionar, quisiera dar al público algunos consejos que utilizo. Con frecuencia la gente se preocupa de tomar una biopsia en el caso de grave por el sangrado. No me preocupa tanto porque cualquier sangrado puede controlarse endoscópicamente sin problema. Entonces recomiendo, si no es característico o no está seguro y es atípico, yo tomaría una biopsia. En una biopsia se ven, se, se toman biopsias de los puntos y de las uh, rayas rojas. Y lo que está buscando es, y también hay que decir al patólogo lo que buscas, que está tomando biopsia para diagnosticar grave. Y lo que tienen que buscar es eh, vasos en la mucosa y la presencia de trombos en los papilares hiperplasia y fibromuscular de las láminas propias como podemos ver en la imagen de la lámina entonces, ¿por qué tomamos la biopsia? Muchos endoscopistas no les gusta hacerlo, pero puede ser de gran utilidad porque el grave puede confundirse con PHG o gastritis. Y sabemos que el tratamiento del grave no funciona para la PHG o gastritis. Además, el tratamiento del grave puede causar complicaciones graves. Es un reporte de casos que publicamos hace un tiempo 
tiempo, en 2007, el GI endoscopy, donde un paciente siguió teniendo un sangrado recurrente de GAVE y terminó con 10 eh, sesiones de coagulación. Pero al final lo que pasó es que hay cicatrices en el píloro y también obstrucción gástrica. Al final tuvo graves problemas que, que le dificultaron la vida y es la complicación de APC. Hay que saber que estás tratando. Si estás tratando el grave y no es gastropatía eh, hipertensa portal. Dos otros puntos que hay que saber, si una biopsia negativa excluye el GAVE, la respuesta es no, pero si una biopsia positiva lo confirma, sí, y una vez que se confirma se puede utilizar la terapia endoscópica, de modo que la biopsia sí puede ser de utilidad en términos de terapia, en terapia médica y endoscópica. La médica obviamente hay que evitar el uso, uso de aspirina y AINES a menos que sean necesar, esenciales. Evaluar la necesidad de anticoagulación o terapia antiplaquetaria. La, los suplementos de hierro son importantes debido al, sang al sangrado y transfusiones pueden requerirse periódicamente. En cuanto a endoscopía, hay, hay dispositivos de contacto térmico o sin contacto. Se utiliza un catéter bipolar o una sonda de calor. Yo trato 25 a 50% del grave a la vez. Espero un mes con eh, dosis de PPI estándar durante el tratamiento. Algunas imágenes del pretratamiento del estómago en forma de sandía arriba a la izquierda con sangrado activo a la derecha. Aquí utilizamos la sonda bipolar y el aspecto postratamiento muestra muchas cicatrices donde solían estar los vasos sanguíneos. ¿Qué hay del grave como refractario al tratamiento endoscópico. Hay estudios recientes sobre el uso de la ablación de radiofrecuencia, también analizando la ligadura con banda endoscópica. Se ha mostrado que, son, que el RFA o la ligadura es superior en pacientes que no responden a la, al APC. Nunca he tenido que mandar a un paciente a cirugía para tratar el GAVE, porque el trata, los tratamientos en la actualidad son muy buenos. ¿Cuál es la relación de eh, GAVE con la hipertensión portal? Eh, en comparación con el sangrado por GAVE, no responde a la reducción de la presión portal. Es importante saberlo, pero sí responde al tratamiento de la hipertensión vascular. Me gusta, si sí, corren el video, por favor, quisiera mostrarlo. Es un tratamiento para gay donde utilizamos un dispositivo RFA para tratar el GAVE. Es un paciente que no respondió al tratamiento APC, coagulación por uh, argón. Con, en cada punto checking that location making full contact with the mucosa we are applying uh, 12 joules per centimeter squared of power and we are applying this two or three times at each location before changing the other thing to remember with using um, RFA is that you often have to take the RFA paddle out and clean it because there's a lot of debris that coats it and decreases the efficacy of it and then you reinsert it and treat some more so This patient did very well with RFA. This is another patient I'd like to tell you about. This is a patient um, who's a, um, a, a woman, I think she was about 65. Um, she was referred to me recently uh, because she has had a lot of bleeding uh, from, from Gave. Uh, they've tried multiple APC sessions, did not work. They tried RFA, it did not work. And this patient was requiring transfusion of one unit of blood every week. So one unit of blood every week in addition to iron 
um, and she was still dropping her hemoglobin, uh, and she was being transfusion dependent for several months. So she was referred to me, and this is actually um, where we, if you see here on, on the previous one, on the top, on the top um, at one o'clock position, there's actually some active bleeding from the gave when we look down there. And what we did is we did the standard band ligation, just the same way you would do for esophageal varices. So very simple, very straightforward. Um, but we banded that area that was bleeding first, and we ultimately banded some of the other areas as well with standard band ligation. And since then, uh, we've done two sessions, and she's had no further bleeding, has not required any blood, and she's stable and doing fine. Um, and again, this is a patient who failed APC and failed RFA. So band ligation, I think, is also worth looking at, especially since it's Le it's, it's obviously it's less expensive than RFA. A banding kit is much less expensive than doing RFA for these patients. Let me switch gears and talk about ectopic varices. So this is the second part of my talk. So for ectopic varices, so these are varices in locations other than the esophagus or stomach. The presentation is usually with acute bleeding. Less common is iron deficient anemia. So acute bleeding is much more common. So bleeding from ectopic varices is rare in cirrhosis. It only occurs in maybe 1 to 5%, but it's certainly uncommon. However, it is much more common, and we've had um, uh, uh, other speakers here talking about portal hypertension, I mean, uh, portal vein thrombosis, I'm sorry, portal vein thrombosis. But it's much more common in patients with um, extra hepatic portal hypertension, such as portal vein thrombosis, where it can occur in 20 to 30% of cases. In terms of classification, this is a classification um, from Saren et al. published in the Clinical Liver Disease in, 2000, in uh, 2012. And what they classified is as luminal and extraluminal. So Dr. Saren and his co-workers um, included isolated gastric varices at the top, uh, including uh, ectopic varices in the duodenum, jejunum, ileum, colon, uh, rectum, anal canal, and peristomal. Extraluminal ectopic varices include intraperitoneal, retroperitoneal, umbilicus, falciform ligament, gallbladder and biliary tree, uh, perisplenic, right diaphragm, ovary, and vagina. So as you can see, they can be almost anywhere. So in terms of diagnosis, because they can be almost anywhere, the diagnosis can be particularly challenging because it's, it's really unclear where they are, and oftentimes they're in locations that are quite obscure. So it, the diagnosis depends on the location of the ectopic varix. So the, the recommendation would be that urgent endoscopy should be performed after patient resuscitation. So resuscitate the patient first, then perform, perform urgent endoscopy. Endoscopy is the traditional upper endoscopy, colonoscopy, perhaps enteroscopy, and capsule endoscopy. Radiology can also be used if the endoscopy is negative. Um, and if you're going to do this, I would particularly tell, ask, ask the radiologist to um, use a protocol, you tell, tell, talk to the radiologist, important to talk to the radiologist, tell them exactly what you're looking for, and come to an agreement with the radiologist as, as to what the best test is. And sometimes the best test would be a thin cut, a thin cut contrast CT scan in the portal venous phase with large volume dilute oral contrast. But it is important in these instances to talk with the radiologist um, you know, as to what you're looking for. This is a picture of some ectopic varices in the duodenum. You'll see here in the picture on the left, some really tr big, grape-like, you know, varices uh, in the duodenum. Um, the one in the, the right panel has, has a um, red color sign. You can see there from recent bleeding. You can see some ectopic varices here in the perirectal on, on CT imaging around the rectum, collaterals, um, you can see these on these two pictures. So in terms of treatment, uh, resuscitation, the first treatment, of course, of any bleeding is resuscitation, all right? So resuscitation is very important, and use a restrictive blood transfusion protocol, aim for uh, low hemoglobins of, of 7 to 8 grams per deciliter. Vasoactive IV medications are used just in, uh, uh, just very similar, uh, the same as uh, traditional varicel bleeding. Uh, with the use of octreotide, tolopressin, and also cover with antibiotics. In terms of endoscopic therapies, um, glue injection with cyanoacrylate is, is, um, can be used. Um, in the US, uh, it is still not FDA approved in the United States, but in the rest of the world, I think um, the rest of the world has been using it for maybe over 10 years or more. 
uh, band ligation can be used, injection of sclerosant, and an uh, EUS guided coil embolization can also be used. Radiologic um, uh, interventions can be used in, in terms of tips with the uh, transjugal intrahepatic photosystemic shunt, BRTO, or the balloon occluded ret retrograde transvenous obliteration, and PTO, or percutaneous transhepatic obliteration. In terms of surgery, um, we, obviously it, it's good to avoid surgery unless you really have to do surgery, but if you have to do surgery, the patients tolerate it much better if they have less severe uh, liver, chronic liver disease, so their child pure A um, class, um, or if they have extra hepatic portal hypertension. You can, a minor surgery can be used with oversome of the duodenal varices, uh, duodenal deauthorization and stapling, circumferential stapled anoplasty. Uh, major surgery in, include um, portal venous shunt surgeries. Um, it's important to know that it's important to exclude splenic vein thrombosis. So, it's particularly if you get isolated gastric varices. Let me repeat that. If you have isolated gastric varices, it's important at the beginning to, to exclude splenic vein thrombosis because if you have splenic vein thrombosis as the etiology of isolated gastric varices, then um, splenectomy is recommended. And the splenectomy can either be done surgically or it can be done interventional radiology way by embolization of the um, splenic artery. Liver transplantation can also be used and considered. Uh, the last few slides show, um, or these two next slides show a, a, a schematic from Sarin et al. from that, uh, uh, that review article I, I told you about in, in 2012. You can see here um, with uh, at the top step one, ectopic uh, varicell bleeding, resuscitation and vasopressors or vasoactive agents, endoscopic therapy. Um, on the left, bleeding is controlled, uh, and then you go to secondary prophylaxis with blade blockers. On the right, if bleeding is uncontrolled, uh, you can do rescue therapies with interventional radiology techniques. Again, talk face-to-face -face with your interventional radiology partners and, and also with the surgeons. If the bleeding is still uncontrolled, then surgical intervention, consider you know, minor, major, or liver transplantation. Again, um, close discussion with the radiologist and the surgeon is very important in, in these instances. One thing to remember is that some of these patients can also present with hemoperitoneum. All right, so this is a case of hemoperitoneum. A patient with a two, uh, you know, bleeding, two gram drop in, more than two gram drop in hemoglobin, hypotension, and has an abdomen with ascites, which is quite common, of course, in these patients. So initial resuscitative measures, diagnostic endoscopy, rule out esophageal varices, rule out gastric varices, treat them appropriately on the left. On the right, if there's no obvious cause and they have a lot of ascites, um, diagnostic paracentesis, measure the hem hem hematocrit. If the hematocrit is more than 5% in the acidic fluid, uh, it's diagnostic of hemoperitoneum. Uh, talk, to the radio talk to your radiology colleagues. Um, perform CT angiography, tips of varicell embolization in this instance. But don't forget hemoperitoneum. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>